Good evening, Entropians. Julian McVean here, and as you can see, we are finally back on Calypso. It's only been two-ish months since I was here last. Maybe three? Well, not come to Calypso, but, you know, actually spending time on Calypso. So, uh, what, what I've got going on here tonight, there's an actual society called Second Life. Fair enough. Oh, these are the shared ones. That's not what we want. Um, we'll go around this way. The shared ones, unfortunately, I found out, don't count for the kill points. Which makes, a, you know, no sense whatsoever, but not much we can do about it. So, anyway, what we've got going on here tonight is a 10-pet um, a hunt. I'm, I'm grinding out my rifle skills, right? <clears throat> so... I'm out here, I'm, I'm totally not being eco either. I'm out here hunting curbs and ghost armor, which, criticize me all you want. I, I've kind of been half hunting. Like, I, I'm, I'm out here hunting, but I'm actually reading and pretty much wanting the gun to do its bit. There we go. Um, but no, I, I made the decision back on Arcadia, as you may recall that I, I need to grind up my rifle skills so that I can be better in group settings because melee weapons are great. They offer huge advantages to strength and to hit points. Uh, but as, as we discovered, and it, it's kind of hard to keep up with a ranged person when you're doing a group hunt. And so I picked up an LR-10 and I, my skill level is so low, I can actually kill something faster with Buk and Spare Rifle. Think about that for a second. I'll, I'll even display it. Watch this. And this right here is about to be about as uneco as you can get. And I'm not even able to do very much damage to him. Comparatively speaking. So let's let's take a look at my current level. So the, the efficiency of an LR-10 is just... It, it can't be beat. It's 62.4%. My skill progress in hit is only 83.9. It uses a little bit less ammo than the LB-10, and it does a little bit less damage than the LB-10 when you're fully there, but I am so low. My high end is barely over the low end for the rifle when you're at proper skill, and I can only I can only pump out less than half as many rounds per minute. Oh, cool, global, 14.82. That was completely unexpected, but that's a good start to a hunt in it. Um... It's just, it's no bueno, is what it comes down to. So, we're out here. Oh, I should probably... I never checked on my skill status, but that's okay. Nighttime is getting really dark. Which, I know it's nighttime, but still. Um, but, I just, I need to be able to do comparable damage when pulling mobs or... You know, if it's, a, if it's a mob, I want to keep at range for an extended period so I can still get those melee hits in, but so it can do less damage to me. Then having a more a better rifle skill would definitely be advantageous. And so I have decided to bite the bullet. I, I needed to finish my Kerberos uh, Iron Mission anyway. So I figured, you know, what the hell? I can go. I've got a higher evade now. I could probably hunt these things in a jumpsuit and be okay. But I'm, I'm not quite willing to risk it. And so I'm sacrificing efficiency, or, or I should say I'm, factor, I'm sacrificing eco to be able to grind out the skill a little bit faster. Especially since like I'm fighting a level 3 with a rifle that really shouldn't be used on a level 3. It's Well, you can use it on a level 3, and let, let's, let's be honest here. It's not just the rifle. I threw a uh, B101 on it. It's got the Headshot 2 um, scope on it, which gives me a bit of a, of a skill bonus. And lets me do this, which is amazing. I think this is a bit of night vision, which is really nice to have when you're in the dark like this. There's one. So, yeah, the, so the irony of this video is that 
if I had done what I was supposed to, I would not, not have even had to record it at this point. Okay, so let me explain this to you. I did the Arcadia Tutorial 3 and 4 videos over the weekend on Saturday, not on the day that my son had his birthday party, but on Saturday. And along with the We Happy Few videos for this week. With the idea that they would be the, the two videos for this week. Arcadia 3 and 4, and then I would start doing... I put a little break in the middle, I do a couple of controlled cost hunts. You know, some lower level, some higher level. Wasn't quite sure what I was going to do, I hadn't had much time to really formulate it. But, I figured, you know, I had a week to figure out what I wanted to do. And, uh... Wouldn't you know, I screwed up the scheduling. And both 3 and 4 ended up posting on Saturday. No, not Saturday, Sunday. As I'm sure you've figured out by now. So, yeah, I don't have anything for uh, Wednesday now, so that's what this is. For those of you wondering, today is Monday. The day, the day of recording is Monday. Of course, this will release on Wednesday. But no, I just... After spending, you know, I, I spent a month on Cyrene, I spent a month on Arcadia, a little over a month on Arcadia, because I, I took that break in the middle to come back to Clipsa to do Mayhem, and I know that there's the robot invasion going on at certain bases. I'm probably going to check out the one over whoa, here at Cape Corinth, because I believe they're about my level. I, I've been watching... Um, I watched Serial Overdrive's video and his uh, team hunt, his, his subscriber hunt, uh, which I did not make it to because I was halfway across the the you know the solar system. And by the time I would have gotten there, it would have been kind of useless. Um, but I, I think that I, th the mobs up here are really more my speed. And so I think I'm going to try, I might try that after the video is over, and maybe I'll do a video of it. The the Snark Snots were the last thing I faced up there, and to be fair, to be fair, I was not quite as far along as I am now, skills-wise. And my evade's a lot better, because I spent all that time swunting and relied strictly on evade to keep me going. And I think I gained quite a few evade points, even though it was only a couple a day. You know, you do it for 30 days straight, and I was doing it for two two plus hours a day for pretty much the entire month of no, October, November. The months of October, November. And so, I believe I gained quite a bit of evade. I think I'm up to like 15 change on evade. Defense, 1503. So, that's, that's I think that's going to help. And I do have the L an LR15. I have an LR10 for lower level hunting, an LR15. Like, I would use an LR, an LB10. Excuse me, wow, I'm all into rifles now. An LB10 for, like, hunting curbs, which is what we're doing now, but I wanted to grind out these rifle skills. If I were to hunt, like, the level 5s and 6s, I'd use the LB10. Um, but I have an LB15 for hunting things at my level because I'm, I'm trying to continue to develop my, my melee and get up to the LB20. Of which I don't believe I'm ready for yet, neither from a, a a skills standpoint nor from a cost standpoint. Because of course, with every weapon upgrade, it, it takes more ammo to use. And yes, the loot should be comparable as long as you're in, you know you're hunting something at your level. But I'm not quite ready to take that step, and I've been doing a lot of very cost efficient hunting. Like I'm hunting using Buchan's spare rifle. And considering my budget, I could I I doubt that I could run out of ped or ammo if I were to strictly hunt using Buchan's spare rifle an entire month. And I might actually experiment with that. But the the thought process is that I can continue to contribute the same amount to my Entropia habit, right? 
but not lose any opportunity of gameplay. And so there, you have to have a certain cost efficiency to do that. And so I may come up with a, whoops, there we go, a methodology to make sure I can continue to do that. Maybe I'll do some high-end hunting and some low-end hunting. Maybe I'll do some more slunting to grind up those evade skills. And I, I can always chip the evade skills. If I, if I feel that, you know, I'm like, I'm never getting hit, I could always chip a ped's worth of evade skills and sell it for 20 ped, right? Some ridiculous amount. And people would buy it, because that's the going rate. Actually, I think the going rate's higher than that right now. No, stop. Do we have... I'm just... I'm, I'm on the low ground. Oh, there's one. But... I don't know. I've... We'll figure it out when we get there. I find that at the LB10, LB15 stage, my budget and my playtime kind of meet. Right. Okay. And so I don't have to worry about running out, but I'm not going to have a whole lot of surplus. I might, but it's doubtful. Um, once I hit the LB20, I don't know. And I know that your, your loot... Uh, your loot pool goes up the more you put into a kill. And, and I think that the way Mindark has kind of formulated it, right, is that you have a, a certain percentage of guaranteed return. Whatever you're, you know, you're going to gain some skills, and skills, of course, have a price attached to them, and whatever is left goes into the loot pool, and you get that loot back, and you get this, this gradual decay of... Oh, that's not bad at all. That's, uh, five ped? I'll take it. Um, you'll have this gradual decay of your of your finances it turns into skills and then of course occasionally they give you the cookie of a, of a, of a global to keep you hunting right and, and that's why some people seem to think this is a casino it's like no it's not a casino you can always chip everything out and if you're smart you'll break even that, that's the whole design is that someone who's intelligent who's patient and reads the market if they were to if they were to sell everything off and chip out, they would at least come away with what they started. And I think it's an extremely intelligent design on uh, Mindark's part. Because they know as long as as long as the market's maintained and the players keep playing, there'll be a market for every good in Entropia Universe, or not every good, but a good chunk of the goods in Entropia Universe. And players aren't likely try to, to try to chip out by TTing everything. Because that would be a disaster for Mindark. And honestly, that would be kind of a disaster for the player. Right? I mean, you don't want to be... Uh, you, you, you don't want to be... Just dumping everything into the TT. And I've broken my own rules. I mean, obviously when you're hunting in space, it's kind of hard. Yeah, uh, you know, you, you don't want to go crossing into, like, Calypso in space. Whoops. You don't want to be going crossing into Calypso in space with a whole bunch of loot on you, because the pirates are going to get you. And if the pirates shoot you down, there goes all your loot. All, all that that money you, you earn fighting those um, space horrors. So sometimes you really don't have much of a choice. I mean, yes, if you're... I know that there's a theory about... Uh, or not a theory, there, there's a certain amount of health. If you're down a certain amount of health, then even if they shoot you down, they don't get anything. But I don't know what that amount is. And there are people out there who really kind of specialize in smuggling past pirates. And, and learning those routes is not easy. And I promise that that is like I'm starting to figure out some of those those quote unquote safe routes. No routes are truly safe, but the, the safer ways of flying around space. And so that I will probably never show on a video. But but the.
the hunting in space I'll show. And, and maybe someday I'll, I'll go up there for space combat and probably get shot down a lot, but maybe just for giggles, maybe just for kicks, I'll go up there looking for a fight and just, you know, spar with the pirates. I'd love to do that with a, with a gunner in my quad. Because that, you know, it may only work once, but wouldn't that be a shock? The pirate's like, wait, there's two guns shooting at me instead of one. Oh, crap. <laughs> but, yeah. No, I, I have to admit, it's nice to be able to play sometimes at this, at this lower level. And... As a hunter, you know, you might think I'm crazy for saying that, but, I mean, no, really, it's nice to sometimes have a, a real no-stress hunt. Like, I'm going to gain some skills, especially in, in a skill set I haven't any, had any... I haven't spent a huge amount of time in. Like, I, of course, like everyone, I started with rifles back at Camp Icarus, and I shot punies for, you know, for a living, and did all that bit, but... Realistically, as soon as I could, once I started, once I started depositing, I just, I switched to melee weapons, and that's all I've pretty much done since then. Um, but I feel like I have missed something because of it. I feel I've gained a lot, but at the same time, I feel that because of the, the desire to tow it with my enemy all the time, which is really my style. I have missed out on the ability to really take something at range that I should take at range. Um, or fight in a group hunt where it's really more efficient for everyone to be shooting at a distance rather than to be, you know, up close and personal. And I'll always carry a sword on me. It will always be my primary profession when it comes to combat, it will always be long blades because that's just who I am. Um, but it's, and it's not that I have anything against firearms. Trust me, I've used plenty of firearms in real life. Look at that. Wow, you can get really up close and personal. Um, of all shapes and sizes. But it's just... As a swordsman, I just have this thing for, for staring my opponent in the eye. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, I, think it, I honestly think it actually came from my WoW days. I mean, yes, as a swordsman, I love swords. I mean, heck, I've got a video on this channel of a friend and me stabbing each other with swords. They're, they're safety tips. We were fencing, we were in proper gear and masks before, you know, some parent hears that and freaks out on me. But, um... But, yeah, I... I and I have nothing against, against rifles. I use rifles many times a year. I don't hunt, but I love to target shoot. And believe me, I, I've done so in many calibers. Um, all the way up to 155 millimeters. Once. Um, so, there's a story behind that. I was in ROTC in school, and we were uh, at Fort Drum, and the I was I was cadet first sergeant for the trip, not for on the regular, but for the trip. And the the cadet CEO who has uh, since passed away, he um he was a veteran who ended up taking his own life. He was one of the twenty two. Um, Dex said, you know, "Everyone, he's the, the the commander of the gun said, choose one cadet to fire this gun, this this howitzer." And, and he never really liked me very much, so I was shocked that he chose me to do it. But he pointed at me and told me to go fire this cannon. And think about this for a second. Imagine being 16 years old, and you're inside of a self-propelled artillery piece. And that's actually going to be the end, because we are out of ammo. I just realized I don't have... Oh, no, I do have a backup weapon, but it's not a great backup weapon for this. Um, Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to hover pod this. We're, we're, we're not taking this chance. But where was I? Oh. 
Um, he, from what I understood, he never really liked me much. I was I was the super geek in school. Big surprise, I play Entropia Universe, right? Uh, and he was one of the you know hip hop loving, cool kids. But and he he pointed to me to fire the gun. So 16 years old and. I've got the, the the chain, which is the trigger for these 155 millimeter artillery pieces, you know, in my clutches. And the, the way you fire it is, you, you you grip with both hands and you spin around until it goes off. And when it, as soon as you feel it pull, you have to let go, or else you it spins you back around as it as it fires. And uh, I did it right. To my credit, I, I didn't think I would. I figured I'd end up spun right back around, and I didn't. And uh, the commander of the howitzer of the of the artillery piece, and I, I'm going to call it a gun. I know it's a howitzer, but it's a gun. The commander of that piece said, "Congratulations, you just sent a 72 pound round 12 miles." Now think about that for a sec, and, and I understand you. Know, if, if you're not someone who likes, you know, weapons or things like that, I, I get it. Okay, it, it's fine. I don't begrudge you that or anything like that. But just, just think about this for a sec. Imagine being 16, and you just threw that much awe-inspiring power, 12 miles down range. It was very it, the the exhilaration was insane so okay story time's over let's do a count up it looks like we got 30.14 ped in loot of course we started with 10 ped oh hang on i should probably pull out a calculator don't you think so 30 point oh bugger one four. Oh, excuse me. Minus the ten that we used for ammo. And then let's repair all. Minus the one thirty four in repairs. So that comes to an eighteen point eight ped profit. I'm just going to repair this now. Uh, actually, no, I won't. I'll do that when I have my spreadsheets up, because as, as I'm sure you have all figured out, I meticulously figure out my spreadsheets. I figure with markup, because like these have markup. This, I think, has a decent markup. It's 102. You know, you, you can sell them pretty well. The wool does too, but I think that it's not. No, this is 108. Oh, wow. This is great markup. You just don't get a lot of it. And the cloth extractors of which they have great markup, but you need a shitload of them. So uh, anyway, this this what I would say was definitely a victorious hunt. And even with the even if I hadn't gotten the global, which was huge, um, because that was like 15 ped almost right off the top, the I still would have come out with a small profit. So I would definitely call this a success. Plus, we got all those skills. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. If you subscribe, please make sure you hit the notification bell so that you know when I post uh, content. I'm, I'm trying to go seven days a week. I'm going to do so with, you know, some greater and some lesser degrees of success. Um, like this past week where I posted two videos at the same time. Facepalm. But, um... I am trying to become, you know, a, a once a day poster. And of course, Entropia Universe is the core of my channel. So please continue to watch. I really appreciate all of the support you and the community have been giving me. It really means a lot to me. That's a really interesting suit of armor with the, with the way the, uh, the helmet goes. Anyway, <laughs> squirrel. Um, so no, really guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You all have a wonderful night.